welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. So, so David, um, you were going to talk about uh, Darren Shaw and White Sparks analysis of a million local businesses from GBP and the distribution of reviews and what, what you thought was interesting about that. Yeah, so I don't even, I mean, there, there wasn't, a, at least as far as I could tell, there wasn't a corresponding write-up from White Spark about any of their sort of main takeaways. Um, Greg, you did a quick synopsis in the, the newsletter this past week, which was enough to catch my attention. <laughs> and I thought, there, you know, the, the sort of the, the top end of, of largest number of average reviews, like those categories were almost almost to a to a category what you'd expect i mean historical landmark number one you know there were a lot of restaurant categories shopping malls uh, hotel categories car dealers right. like sort of the typical categories that you'd expect at the top uh of the head of the the largest number of average re- average reviews i guess the the more interesting sort of takeaways for me were sort of the first of all the the breadth of the the middle of the review curve, um, just the number of what I would have considered sort of fairly long tail, not not particularly sort of review inclined categories that had hundreds of reviews on average. Um, just really, r- really interesting stuff. I'm just looking just to cherry pick a couple like orthotics and prosthetic service, 212 average reviews, ophthalmology clinic, 211 average reviews, you just welding supply store, 155. Now, some of these only had a couple of businesses that were that were contributing to this average but um just very very interesting stuff in terms of the i guess my my takeaway here is just my first takeaway here is just something mike's been saying for years and years and years just wow google's review corpus across even really long tail categories that in many cases probably don't even exist on yelp has just exploded and so the the number of reviews where that google has access to um to potentially inform rankings and and uh themes around which business, certain businesses should rank like that was that was certainly a big takeaway um then another takeaway was in a lot of very much your money or your life categories um medical category longer tail medical categories but also like financial planning financial consultant like these guys only had like a couple of reviews each right. if you think about the the average lifetime value of a customer <laughs> in those categories like wow just getting a handful of reviews could like literally make your business if you're a, if you're a small, you know, independent financial planner or whatever. So um, I guess that was the other, another takeaway is just like, you really, it, it, depending on your category, you might not need to, need to do a whole lot of work to have a massive impact on um, how well your, your Google business profiles will, will perform. And then the third takeaway is just given the, pretty significant disparity between, I mean, you know, financial planners is a good example, or I'll pick financial consultant, because uh, there's a lot of them with that category, over 3,500 listings um, that Darren looked at, only six average reviews there, right? Um, and if you compare that again to the welding supply store example earlier with 200 and some reviews, you really need to do this research on a category and geography based basis. Um, you have to know who you're competing against in your local market, in the category that you compete in, um, to know what it's going to take to move the needle in terms of reviews. And I think that's probably my my biggest overall takeaway was just, wow, there's just a lot of, of discrepant data in here, if that's even an adjective. Um, and it really speaks to the need to do this on an individual location by location and industry by location basis. What we saw in the, in the medical uh, healthcare research that we did <clears throat> the the lack of reviews for doctors and for clinics, you know, there was just a very sort of sparse distribution of reviews and people were really desperate to find doctors and clinics that had more review content. That was a consistent theme. And so I think I think you're totally right that, <clears throat> you know, some Darren pointed out and my Darren and I had a kind of a quick slack discussion about it. And he pointed out that in some of these sort of lower volume categories, there may be a regular, you know, regulatory scheme in place that kind of inhibits their ability to, to aggressively market. But, um, but there were a lot of categories that didn't have that many reviews. 
So, you know, I mean, if you could establish what's the sort of average review uh, or kind of the review thresholds in your category and what are the numbers, what are the volumes that you need, um, you know, that, as you say, I think you could do yourself a lot of good. I mean, we've seen, um, <clears throat> we've seen people consistently look at review counts they look for reviews, they look at they look at star ratings and they look at counts and they don't read the reviews themselves in most cases. So it, it, it will not only boost you in terms of ranking, but in terms of conversions as well. The other piece that I saw recently in several of the videos of the research we've been doing, when people do read the reviews, they often don't, they look at the most recent reviews to see if reviews are coming in on a current basis because old reviews are thought to be, in other Stay. words, they would, they would order by newest to see if there were current reviews. They weren't looking to see what the problems were. So even when they do look at the reviews, it's not a very deep analysis. It's yeah. A, they're just, a they're just kind of getting a snapshot. It's just kind of a quality, quick quality check to qualify or disqualify right. somebody. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> so anything, anything else you want to say, David, about the uh, the reviews analysis. No, just I hope Darren publishes an actual post on this with his his takeaways as well. Um, just well, I think I think doing analysis and sharing the data uh, with with all of us. Yeah, I think I think your take is pretty pretty interesting and um, you know kind of a a, a very practical uh, piece of advice coming out of that. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.